It's Danny David Moore. We're out here at Edgar's Cantina, and we're joined by a guy who's off to quite a great start for the Mariners. Taylor Botter's with us. Taylor, what's going on? Oh, just enjoying the beautiful weather here in Seattle. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a little bit of sarcasm there, right? Tiny bit. A little bit of sarcasm because you're, you're a guy. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you went to college in Carolina, coastal Carolina, right on the beach. Yes. And then you played in Tampa, so this is a little bit different than what you're used to. Oh, yeah, I was born and raised in South Florida, too, so... Uh, the wind, the cold's kind of getting me right now. How, how much fun has this week been for you? I mean, three doubles in one game, a home run in the next. And uh, so a lot of Mariner fans are excited about uh, what you've been doing so far. It's just been a blast to get on the field again. You know, I, I accepted my role as being a utility guy here, and I, I knew that's what I was going to be. And Gene goes down, which isn't a good thing for us. But um, I'm happy to fill in and, and do what I can until he gets healthy again. What to, Do you have a favorite as far as the position? Shortstop may be more natural for you? Yeah, I played short growing up, so I would say that. But people ask me that question all the time, and I've been a utility guy for so long that it's really difficult to, to put a nail in one of them. Is first base as hard as, as they say? It's different. you got to learn the field from the left side. So everything that happens when you turn and face the outfield is going to happen on your left. Instead of from short and third, it's happening on your right. So cutoffs and everything like that. So you got to learn how to switch the field and really learn your – Left from, from right, really. Yeah. Well, Taylor, when you're a utility guy, do you get pigeonholed into being that as, as being a, a backup player? I mean, is there a part of you that thinks, well, wait a minute, I know the versatility is going to help me overall, but I'd like to be playing every day too. Yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to accept. Uh, it's easier out here seeing all the guys we got, like Segura, Cano, Seeger. Dyson, Martin, like all these guys are they're stars. So I accept my role and I know what it's going to be. Granted, do I want to play every day? Yeah, but I want to help this team win a championship more than anything. It also has to help. It, a long time ago, it was Jose Akendo who was kind of the guy, the multi-positional player. Ben Zobrist has become seen as a real key to winning baseball. And that that's to be called someone that's Zobrist without necessarily a position per se has become a huge compliment. Zobrist was actually in Tampa when I was there. Um, so I talked to him a lot. I got to... Uh, just feed off his knowledge, and it was great. You know, take ground balls, take fly balls, do whatever you can to, to last in this game. And he's done it really well, and he's succeeded tremendously. We are talking to Taylor Modic here. And I got to know, why does service like messing with you? <laughs> I guess I'm the fun guy to mess with in the clubhouse. I, I don't know. I guess I'm the easiest one to mess with. Because I heard that when you'd made the team, and really people that have been watching spring training and following it didn't have that much question about who the utility guy was going to be. But I guess he slow played it with you in the meeting and kind of tried to make it seem like you did, hadn't made the team. Yeah, you know, I didn't want to be the guy who was for sure that I had made the team. So I kind of myself was waiting to hear to make plans. I still I just moved into my apartment yesterday that I had just found two days ago. So I didn't put the cart in front of the horse. But, yeah, he called me in there and uh, he had pulled the, well, you know, you had a good spring training. And all of a sudden I saw Andy McKay next to him laughing. And I was like, God. <laughs> that, that's just mean. They isn't got it? me. Yep, they got me. Yeah. Did you really think that you hadn't made it? Did you? Did, did, was your heart sinking? Let's just say I had the. I had that process happen before, and it didn't happen. So yes, my brain went immediately to that. Mm -hmm. But good news came out of it. So. So first reaction when you heard you were being traded to the Seattle Mariners. Happiest day of my life. Was it? Why? I was ready for something new. I was absolutely ready to uh, get out of Tampa. Um, I was ready and looking forward to my team, new teammates here, getting to know new people, getting to new, uh, getting to know a new coaching staff. It was the absolute best thing to happen in my career and in my life so far. You know, before every year, uh, we always pick a guy that is our guy. You know, Danny took Mitch Haniger. I took Mike Zanino this year. He took you. Ask him why. Well, it's the hair. <laughs> It's the hair, man. It's I love hair. the hair. I mean, it's got to be right. It's just <laughs> easy. I didn't. I really didn't know anything about you, but I just thought, well, and then come to you know find out more about you too. It's not just the hair, but I, I love that you like getting your uniform dirty too. Oh yeah, you got to. I mean, you didn't play hard that day. <laughs> that was pretty uh, strange. Altuve, like he's kind of a cult hero on our show because we love. There's a website called How Many Altuves, and you can plug it in to see how many Altuves anything. Like you're probably one and a half okay. Altuves. <laughs> He was sitting there like truly, he was truly mesmerized by your hair. Well, what, the what was he saying? The funny thing was I saw the video and I didn't even know he was touching or feeling my hair. So <laughs> I looked at the video and I was like, oh, he was actually grabbing it. Um, but he had asked me 
to teach him how to grow it. <laughs> well, I, you just don't cut it, Jose. I said, yeah, you know what? Just give me a call. I'll send over a bunch of instructions for you, and <laughs> you can go from there. Do you feel weird when you found out he'd actually touched your hair? Did you feel violated at all? <laughs> no, it's happened so much that really? I've got people pulling on my hair left and right. I guess it just comes with the con. The Are you going to touch his hair, Jim? Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm going to touch his hair right now. That's pretty Is it cool. soft. That's yeah, nice. What do you What do you use on that? You know what? It's just shampoo and conditioner. That is it. That's it. And a hundred brushes a day. Oh, you brush it a lot. A hundred times a day. One, two, three. Just count no, it out. No, you don't. Go ask Bogart. <laughs> Every day before the game, a hundred strokes. It's a hundred times. Oh yeah. So you d- you never stop at ninety nine or go to one hundred one. Got to be a hundred. It's got to be a hundred. Got to be the perfect smoothness. So was. <laughs> See, I told you I love this guy. <laughs> What, uh, so did it start as a superstition to, to grow your hair out and then you, you went four for four and you thought, man, I got to keep it growing? No, actually, I tried to do it. I just did it to be funny one day and then it caught on and everyone just asked me, hey, did you get your 100, 100 strokes in today? Yeah, yep, mm. I just got it done. Yeah, because I saw a picture of you at Coastal Carolina and you, were, you had it cut. It was like shaved. It looked like Kyle Seeger almost. Oh, yeah, it was really, really short. When did you decide to? I had the worst year of my life in 2012 on the baseball field and I Figured it had to be the hair. It wasn't yeah. the Indian. It had to be the arrow. So I just grew the hair out and was hoping that that was the reason. And it's worked for you. Oh, yeah. So I, since then? Since then, it's been awesome. 2012. So I'm mom and dad okay with it? Uh, dad. Mom. What about dad? <laughs> Dad's probably the um, one. Mom is okay with it now. They wish it was shorter. They liked it when it was shorter. But they accept it now, I guess. Yeah. So will you just – I, I want to keep going with the hair for – just right. like 30 more seconds. Will you just let it keep going the whole year? Until it affects my play on the field, yes. All right, so it hasn't affected you at all. I guess it was there a hair flip cam or something going on here? Already? Yeah, somebody had mentioned that the other day. I guess the game that I came in, they put a hair flip cam, on, and mm-hmm. I had no clue, and I just looked up, and they were like, dude, that's big time. I was like, yeah, that is pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Everyone's in the stands flipping their hair and stuff. See, you want everything going in your favor. Like, that makes it tougher to make any changes, right? I mean, I just it's can't a, now. Creating a marketing strategy that's around you. That's the whole you. key. Building your brand. Head and shoulders, Kurt, <laughs> give me a call. Whoever <laughs> you talked about Andy McKay, Scott Service, getting to know new people. What have you seen from the Mariners organization in this team so far? That it's a great place. Um... The clubhouse is loose, relaxed, it's fun. Even on the skid that we're on right now, nobody's hitting the panic button. Everybody knows the the atmosphere and the type of team that we've put together for the future. And, and I think 10 games in, nobody's worried about it. Everyone's having a good time, and we're ready to go out and win ball games just as much as everyone's ready to see us win ball games. Yeah, you mentioned the skid there, Taylor. And we talked to Jerry DePoto yesterday, and I asked him, you know, what do you, what do you tell guys to do on, you know, when you're in a slump besides – grow out your hair because <laughs> that takes a while but what do you do when you're in a slump and you have a day off do you just and he he recommended you just entirely get away from baseball yeah you don't even watch baseball you don't go on twitter to find out about baseball you don't go on espn you don't do anything yeah. for me it's i had to spend time with my fiance and my dog and and moved into our new apartment and and that was it you know i didn't look at baseball i didn't look to see how my buddies were doing i didn't see if anyone else won it was just a full day away from the field and and baseball so you're engaged yes can a married guy give you one piece of advice after your wedding don't ever say the best day of your life was the day you got traded to the mariners (laughs) that's still to come The second thing is, did you have to sell her on the hair? Because I'm running into a problem. I'm trying to grow my hair out. No, she is all for it. Okay. When we went through spring training, um, they played a little joke on me saying that I would have to cut it through spring training. And she was freaking out more than I was back home. You better not cut it. I'll dump. I'll leave you right now if you cut it. <laughs> oh, she was getting into it. So, yeah, she uh, she loves the hair more than I do. So is that another service joke was telling you you had to cut your hair? Yeah, that was them getting on me in spring training for sure. Man, do you yep. think he should grow his hair out? Do it. Join the join the club. I don't know. It looks kind of because I don't like hippies. I like the gray though. You like the gray coming <laughs> out? <Hey. laughs> Just live with it. I that's love exactly it. Exactly right. Are you a romantic kind of guy? And I know that's a weird thing for me to be asking, but the reason I'm asking is because I'm trying to get at how you proposed to your wife, um, or your fiance. No, it was a um, wow, not very romantic guy. I guess what you learn in this game is is. 
you have to forget things and move on pretty quickly. So I try to be as caught up in the moment as possible. But with this game, I've learned that emotions are very tough to have on and off the field. Um, so I try my best, but sometimes I know I don't get them fully there as I should. So what did you just say? Hey, you want to get married? No. <laughs> no, it was um, <laughs> It was actually not a really good story. I mean, it was a to-be-announced thing that we did on the side and, and – we're pretty quiet about it, so. Okay. Well, then I'll, I'll steer clear of that, but I, I want to find out more about your dog. Yes. Because uh, I, I saw I saw the golden doodle there on Instagram, and uh, there's one picture there where you're standing there, and he's on his back legs, and you guys, you're, you're giving your, your, your cheek to cheek with your dog there. I love that stuff. Oh, yeah. He's uh, actually had to get him <laughs> registered as an emotional support animal so he could come out here with me because we used to live in Charlotte. And I played in Durham, and he would just drive back and forth with us. Now I had to get him on a plane and get him out here and all that good stuff. So, yeah, he, 85-pound golden doodle traveled on the plane with us from Charlotte to Arizona, Arizona, Seattle. And Wait, he was up in the passenger area? Yep, right yeah. under my feet. Oh, okay. You don't have to buy him a seat or anything? <laughs> no, they wouldn't let him. Yeah. He has to stay in the aisle. Did oh. you get a doctor's note? How do you get a dog that's 85 pounds declared an emotional support dog? Well, it was tough. You got to go through a big process, but um, yeah, pretty much saying something's wrong with you, and um, you get a doctor's note, and he can travel with you as much as possible. That's awesome. <laughs> what made you want to get a golden doodle? Well, I had a golden retriever at one point. Loved it. Died of cancer at three years old. So then the next best thing was a golden doodle, who they were pretty much just giving away in our area. So we went and picked it up, and it's been a good dog since, but. What's your dog's name? Yankee. Yankee, Yankee. Doodle. Uh-oh. <laughs> I see that. Yeah. I a thought a, it was a maybe team that he could never play for no. with, with that hair. That's, That's true. Right. No. That's true. Well, he's not going anywhere the way he started with the Mariners. Yeah, no kidding. I like uh, that. Besides the Jose Altuve grabbing your hair, have you had that, like, uh, Major League Baseball moment? Like, have you come across, like, somebody that was like, wow, watch that guy? Or you've had uh, that sort of welcome to the league moment? Yeah, there was uh, last year in Detroit, so I'm from Palm Beach where the Marlins have their spring training, and I remember seeing a young Miguel Cabrera coming up through the organization. He was always the guy to watch. His BPs were so good. He was so strong. He was 20 years old, and um, seeing him in Detroit and actually having him talk to me in Detroit was um, you know, awesome. It was just no words can describe it. You know, it was great, great did, feeling. Did you go up to him and start the conversation, or how'd that go? I think I pinch ran for somebody, and he was messing with my hair again, too, and <laughs> we were talking and just went from there. But, yeah, it was pretty nice. That's really cool. What's the best mascot you've had? Because we got a list of them. So the Chanticleer was your college mascot, the mascot at Coastal Carolina. Yeah. You also played for the Biscuits at one point, is that right? Yes, but the mascot is not a Biscuit. Oh, that's disappointing. It is a, they call it Miss Piggy, so it's a pig. And the other mascot they have is like an elephant-looking thing uh -huh. who just eats biscuits. So it's like the biscuit eater or something <laughs> like that. So it's not a true biscuit. It's like a. Yeah, I could do that, play that role. I could be that mascot. <laughs> the biscuit just eater. Just scarf some biscuits. What, the Chanticleer is like a rooster, right? Yeah, it's, the, uh, it's from the Canterbury Tales, and it is the chicken that or the rooster that rules the coop so he's like the big time he's the the big guy he's the jim moore of of our show oh jim is yeah. the chanticleer yeah right <laughs> it, it looks like <laughs> taylor's getting a kick out of that one too uh it looks like it means a lot to you coastal carolina playing there yeah it was uh it's always good to see a little school like that uh win and then as i went there knowing that I'd never heard of Coastal Carolina. I'd just seen them in a super regional. And, hey, maybe if I go to this team, I got a chance to not only play every day but make it to a College World Series, which is everyone's goal. And it's in Myrtle Beach. It's in Conway, which is a rock throw away from Myrtle Beach. Okay. Well, I've been on a golf trip or two to Myrtle Beach. I mean, it's a, a golf mecca there. And, and, boy, it's a late-night place, too. You got any good stories you can pass along from your Coastal Carolina days? I got some some good bad stories but we may save those for another day um it's just always spring break there so going to class was a very tough thing let's just say that during the day um so you always wanted to be on the beach or you always wanted to be out hanging around somewhere by the beach because it was probably six or seven weeks of spring spring break there so 
He is Taylor Motter. Taylor, it's really good to get a chance to meet you. Thank it's been you. a blast to watch you, and we look forward to kind of you continuing this run. Welcome to Seattle. Thank you very much for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks.